A warm welcome to Business Daily here on Trust TV. I am Yusuf Akogwa. Of course, it's a beautiful Thursday morning here in the nation's capital. We are reaching you live from here in Abuja. Uh, we, we are we like we've been uh, giving uh, uh, the coverage. The Islamic Development Bank annual conference for 20. 23 is on in Jeddah, city of Saudi Arabia. And the opening ceremony of that event is expected this morning. Our correspondent Salim Umar is live there and he sent in a, a couple of visuals uh, a while ago about the uh, opening uh, press conference of that event. So the opening conf uh, press conference is on the way as we speak. And of course, uh, later uh, in the day, of course, if we can't get him on the show, but of course, later in the day, we'll get him to give us live update of that event and of course you know nigeria is uh, one of the 57 member uh, states of that uh, uh, group so of course we are, we are very very much present in that organization we have enjoyed quite a whole lot of benefit as member of that uh, uh, organization and of course we expected that uh, this conference this 20, 2023 conference rather will also uh, continue to uh, benefit uh, uh, the country and of course as, a, a, an, as an integral member of the organization we are, we are, our finance minister is expected to be there as one of the representatives uh, that will lead the Nigeria, Nigeria delegation at that uh, a conference so we will keep a tap on that conference and of course all the discussions all the key meetings with stakeholders and of course the engagement with a uh, private or uh, public uh, investors we will uh, give you that update live here on trust television just stay glued to business daily and of course other programs on trust tv for the live update of that uh, event which kick off uh, properly today uh, the dignities have been arriving for the past two days and of course the event is kicking off properly this morning and of course uh, all the discussions and all the panels uh, panelists and everything will actually you know uh, kick start uh, today so I uh, will bring you the update like I said and of course uh, stay tuned to trust television but quickly now let's give you our top stories uh, from the world of business this morning take a look interesting development there in the world of business quickly we go to the stock market and give you uh, the market uh, update for uh today not directly the uh, this morning index but of course what transpired yesterday on the floor of the nigerian uh, uh, stock exchange we understand that the market apply what we call break yesterday we uh it's been green or true for some time now but yesterday we saw the market uh, uh i mean changing direction uh, we'll look at how the trading pattern went yesterday we begin from the nigerian market as well of course from the index uh, we saw that uh, the market closed a uh, negative yesterday with the index uh dropping the a huge number the 0.75 percent why the all share index there see maintain the stand there at 52,000 and uh, uh, a basis point why of course the market cap they lost over two billion uh, uh naira uh from from the trading uh, 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 uh that we saw yesterday Ap apparently the uh, profit takers are actually beginning to come into the market of course if you look at the volume of trade that we actually uh traded yesterday we saw that uh, 55 uh, 554.31 uh 2 million volume of shares exchange hands among investors yesterday on the floor of the Nigerian capital market. And of course, the value there are 5.957 uh, 
billion naira in the deals of about 5,168. These uh, are the highlights of what transpired yesterday on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Of course, the negative trade we are seeing is uh, certainly not really unconnected with profit taking. Sometimes when the market gains for a while, you see that investors look at, okay, let me get, uh, see uh, what I can get from my little investment. And of course, you see them coming in to dispose some of their holdings for cash. And of course, in a way that uh, uh, may push the market down to the red zone and that is why we are seeing a negative uh, uh, territory uh, market um, i mean the market uh, closing negative at the close of market on wednesday we hope that uh, we'll see a rebound today at the close of uh, the market we'll be monitoring and uh, we'll give you live update from here a quick look at the gainers for uh, for wednesday we saw that uh, adova adova is an uh, an oil company, I mean, uh, of course, an oil uh, company as well. So, the gaining 22 uh, naira there to close strong there at 10 percent. Of course, NCR also gained 2.33. Uh, two naira 33 cobrada to close strong at 9.91 percent and of course transcorp uh they have been very very much uh, in the news in the last couple of days if you recall uh the business a uh, mogul femi or tedola uh, attempted to i mean to uh buy about uh, to buy over that company rather about 250 billion bid he, he, he made there was rejected uh there according to him he planned to increase the capital base of the company to about two trillion uh, of course which uh, was rejected there by the company uh, there so we will continue to give you live updates from there they transcribe their closing strong there uh two naira uh 15th cover there to close uh, uh nine point six nine percent and of course if you look at the losers uh, uh, uh counter we saw that the cavity helicopter also i mean losing one naira five cover there uh to close negative there nine point four uh eight uh, percent and of course uh Soon as so, of course, also losing a uh, 49 cover there to close the negative there 9.26 uh, percent, and of course, close completing the top three losers for the day. We have Bois cement, of course, Bois is uh, one of the high cap uh, uh, stock quoted on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange Group, of course, closing, uh, losing huge, a very huge uh, loss there. 19 naira it lost that day. Uh, that is a very, very huge number. And I, I must tell you that if you're an investor, this is the right time to put your money in that company. Uh, when the company is uh, down by 90 cobo and uh, 90 naira rather, uh, you know that the, the value of the shares probably will have dropped to a point whereby uh, what you can... Uh, with minimum or maybe as low as uh, you can afford, you can you'll be able to uh, buy into that company. So it is an interesting time for investors who are, are, are actually very very good at looking at the market. So Boas Cement down there uh, is 0.02 uh, percent. That we look at uh, uh, that and uh, see that uh, uh, for a very long time we've not really seen them featuring on the sh the market chart. But again, coming up uh, yesterday in this uh, losing this. Uh, amount of money is actually a huge number there so we'll move on quickly to look at the top traded stock for wednesday so of course the banking sector is dominating the uh, uh, trading across counter there we see access uh, holdings there of course doing 139 million shares there followed by fbn holdings 101 million shares and of course FCMB uh, completing the top three gainers. They all from the banking sector. The liquidity in that sector is indeed attracting investors from that uh, uh, into that uh, sector as well. So 80.2 million uh, volume of shares they traded uh, in that by that uh, bank uh, FCMB group on Wednesday. So quickly look at uh, the sec performance across key sectors. Of the market so we start with the banking sector so despite the performance uh, across uh, sectors there we saw the banking sector uh, coming down there 1.22 percent apparently because the profit takers are actually you know back in the market as well so the industrial sector is also down there uh, 3.40 percent that is a huge number there if you ask me of course like ngs consumer goods also uh, i mean doing strongly there uh 1.30 percent on oil and gas of course if you see uh what uh, the uh like of adova did uh on the uh, last uh, or yesterday on the floor you uh, it's actually reflecting on the performance of the oil and gas sector when we saw adova there closing top there uh uh, uh do it i mean about 10 percent it gained uh yesterday at the close of the market so that has reflected in the performance of the oil sector 0.93 percent and of course the insurance sector is down zero 
0.21%. Uh, uh, I talked to you earlier about uh, the business man, uh, Mogo, or the Nigerian billionaire investor, uh, Femi Otedola. Uh, and uh, if you look at uh, his, his investment in Gerego, he owns about 96.96% of that company. And he increased that investment yesterday on the uh, on that company, he buy about 2.388 uh, uh, million shares of that company there yesterday to increase his holdings of that company. There seems to be a lot happening in the power sector. Uh, last week, it was about the Transco Power and again, the Giregui uh, Power Plant, which owned by himself by uh, uh, Femi Otedola, is also, I mean, attracting attention there so so he increases holding uh, probably close to 100 percent ownership of the company so we look we look up to we'll keep a tab on it and see what is indeed developing in the power sector we see transcorp and now get a good power plant probably he the money he was to use to buy over a uh, transcorp of course is actually re in reinvesting that money back into his own company so we'll see whether a power play in a way going on between these two uh, friends, uh, so to say. So we we'll move on to the Africa market quickly. What are the markets across Africa? Do we go to Johannesburg Stock Exchange down there in South Africa? The market is down negative 0.11 uh, percent. Of course, uh, the Nigeria South Africa market. Uh, we probably we will see uh, what will happen uh, today. The market is on down in Joburg there. So uh, moving on to Malawi Stock Exchange down there in the Central Africa. The market is up there 0.62 percent with the, with the all share index there. A high there 94,173.01 basis point. And of course the Ghana Stock Exchange, our next door neighbor, also uh, doing strong there. Not so strong. Uh, it is closed flat yesterday. I uh, mean the day uh, before yesterday. And of course at the, at the close of trading session yesterday the market also closed uh it's flat also uh there yes uh, yesterday as well so we will keep it continue to give you live update from uh, uh, uh the markets across africa and all the issues in the world of uh, business uh, about that but again we in terms of our discussion we are going into a different uh topic entirely this morning we are looking at the non oil sector this is a sector that of course has contributed greatly to the gdp of nigeria for a very long time now we've seen improvement in key uh, areas mining sector the agriculture and a whole lot of them and nigerians are calling for more attention to that sector given the uh, amount of solid minerals that we have almost everywhere in this part of the world. So we take this report by Shamu Dabeng about that non-oil sector and of course the need for more investment in that sector. When we come back from that uh, report, I will be talking to a guest regarding what we need to do to avoid or rather to uh, move away from our overdependence in the Nigeria, uh, in the oil sector. Take this report. Once a major boost of the country's GDP, the oil sector contributed a mere 4.34 percent in quarter four of 2022. Nigeria's reliance on crude oil as its major export has now become a setback in the nation's quest for economic development. As the country grapples with challenges like the volatility of global crude oil prices as well as oil bunkering in the Niger Delta, which has drastically reduced Nigeria's oil output, dropping from an estimated 2.4 million barrels per day to about 1.3 3 million barrels per day with an estimated $700 billion revenue. However, leaders at the sub-national level spoke on the importance of leadership and the role it plays in boosting the country's economy. These episodes of surge and decline depends on the leadership at any point in time, the stock and content of human capital in the government, and then where the government gravitates in a spectrum of between what I call the two T's, transactional leadership, transformational leadership. Over the decades, you will find our leadership and performance and reforms gravitating between these two spectrums, one extreme of, of the extremes. Depending on where we are, we have either up or we go down. Political leadership matters. If you don't have political will to take very difficult decisions, that may be unpopular in the short term but solves long-term problems that the rest of the people may not see but you know it you know it has to be done um, 
then you are in good shape. Nigerian leaders are concerned over the culture of blame game among the elites rather than focusing on pragmatic ways of addressing the pressing issues. However, the 18th Emir of Kano, Sanusi Lamidu Sanusi, has a different view. I don't believe in covering up incompetence. I don't believe in being politically correct and not saying that something was not done properly. And if we want to really make progress in this country, we have to learn from the good and the bad. We have to see what we did right, but we also have to look at where we went wrong. If I have a new government on May 29 that tells me, oh, I'm going to continue paying this subsidy for the next three years, I'll face over three years, I'm going to say you're not serious. I mean, I'm going to just close my eyes and get ready for the next election in 2027 because we're going to be here in 2027 talking about the same things. As Nigeria looks to economic diversification and development, there is a need for massive private sector investments, fiscal consolidation, and a need to assess Nigeria's economic surges and emulate the highs. Chamun Dabeng, Trust TV News, Abuja. Interesting report today about the need to diversify the Nigerian economy away from the current overdependence on, of course, oil revenue. I'm being joined now in the studio by political and economic analyst Joseph Ango. It was good to have you on Business Daily. Oh, thank you for having me. So you listening to that report today, yeah. particularly what uh, the uh, 14th Emir of Kano said, Sanusi Lamidu Sanusi. What is your reaction to that? I think um, <laughs> um, the talk around di diversification is um, uh, a very interesting topic. But one thing we should um, understand is that anytime there's that talk around diversification, it's, it's, it's all, it's, uh, let, let me just put it this way. There's diversification or moving away from oil is usually a very useful verbiage whenever we are struggling with oil, uh, crude oil pr production or the, prices or, or the price of oil is tanking. And whenever, but whenever there is that uh, rise in production or there is the increase in oil price, we slip back uh, to our usual um, old tendencies. Uh, I mean, it reminds, uh, we go back to that uh, Gowan era with that popular uh, statement that um, uh, the problem is uh, how to spend it. There's so much money, the problem is how to spend it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, diversification is, for me, for the last um, 10 years or 20 years, um, has been political, more or less. Mm. It's very suitable, very interesting talk, but we've not seen any real movement uh, by politicians uh, across the different uh, levels of government to really explore non-oil mm. Uh, uh, non-oil sectors of our economy. Mm. Then look at this. There is this uh, issue that has actually been giving me serious concern. I think other uh, Nigerians too will also be worried. Crude oil, I mean oil sector as it is, in the last, uh, according to the last uh, uh, reports by the NBC, the Q4 result 2022 by NBC, oil sector contributed only 4.34% to GDP. But if you look at it on the other way around, it contributed about 90% of our revenue. What is this contradiction? Why do we have these discrepancies? Uh, the, problem, the, the problem is uh, very simple here. Yeah. If you look at uh, um, um, oil, oil sector, it's primitive. We just, uh, we don't refine crude oil as much as we should, mm. uh, given that we have comparative advantage uh, with crude oil and uh, gas production. How many um, uh, of our refineries are working? what's the state of the petrochemical industry. So basically what we do in Nigeria is that we produce, I mean, 1.6 barrels of crude oil per day. A lot of it uh, leave the country. Then we get uh, uh, imports, petrol imports, diesel imports, uh, uh, polythene imports, and so on and so forth. So the problem or the challenge with the oil sector is that there is little value addition in that sector. The sector is not, uh, there's, there's little value addition. And on top of that, uh, I mean, there is not enough uh, employment going on in th that sector because 
we were just uh, uh, exporting uh, crude oil really and importing and in, uh, uh, the, the refined products. Exactly. So that's where the contradiction in is. In a way, what you're saying is that the uh, job creation around that sector is tied to the refineries. Yeah, uh, refineries and the petrochemical um, industries. So we're talking about paints, we're talking about uh, polythene, for example, a lot of uh, 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 crude oil uh, products go into plastic production and so on and so forth. Think about it. We used to have a lot of made in Nigerian plastic companies. How many of them are working? Mm. We'll get instead a lot of plastics coming from China and some uh, uh, parts of uh, other parts of, uh, of the world. So, uh, I mean, look at uh, uh, oil products that go into textile production. How many of these textile companies are working? So we have uh, um, uh, uh, refinery. Our refineries are moribund. Absolutely, yes. And on top of that, the ancillary sectors, or the sectors that should build around um, oil production, are basically not functional. Now, you talked about uh the issue of diversification yeah we've been talking about this for a very long time it's like it's more in theory than in practice yeah so uh, almost every government that comes in talks about economic diversification we need to move away from over dependence on crude oil but it seems not to be in practice where are we missing it wrong where are we missing it is it that the implementation processes are not on ground or where, where is the approach where is the, where are the issues coming from i think the the, the problem is lack of coordination um, Nigeria, in many ways, lacks that overall uh, vision or that overall um, economic uh, direction. You see the National Development Plan. How many of the states uh, have embraced that National um, de uh, Development Plan document? Mm. I'll remind you, um, in 2006, we had a minister for uh, commerce and industry. His name was Alaji Aliyu Modibo Umar. Uh, he used to be a reporter, by the way, he used to be a reporter with NT and later became a lecturer. So he was um, Minister for Commerce and Industries. That, that, that uh, ministry has um, metamorphosed into Ministry of Trades and Investment. Now, I remember there was a document produced by that ministry that clearly uh, states that every state in Nigeria has a minimum uh, a comparative advantage in producing two crops, producing or uh, uh, mining two minerals, and looking at, uh, I'll just add, uh, two animals. So, I mean, we had that very, very wonderful documents. There was a large, uh, very, very elaborate ceremony around uh, the presentation of that document. The question you ask yourself is, which state in Nigeria really followed Mm, that economic uh, uh, that remind, that brings me to the uh, statement made by uh, for Governor Erufai of Kaduna State. He did say that uh, we should go back to the 1963 Constitution, the issue of resource control. States should take 80% of the resources and, of course, remit the uh, remaining 20% to the federal. We understand that almost every state in Nigeria uh, can actually produce one or two mineral resources. So do you think uh, this uh, suggestion by Governor Erufai is in the right direction? <laughs> you know, ironically, uh, Governor Rufai was the chairman of uh, uh, the, the, the co presidential committee on uh, restructuring, mm, and uh, that committee produced of power. Uh, of, that committee manufactured some documents. Mm. The question you ask yourself is, the government of the day in a span of eight years, because that document was produced in the um, early uh, 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 periods of this current administration, what was really done? I mean, we have had this clamor for a very long time about uh, devolution of power, restructuring, resource control, and so on and so forth. The question, of course, he said it, is the lack of political will. And of course, that has uh, made matters worse. Uh, uh, that has been made uh, nearly impossible by this uh, lazy attitude of uh, state governors. For example, uh, you, uh, it was mentioned, oil produces I mean, much of our revenue. Yeah, yes. So the question is, I mean, what other incentives do state governors really have to produce in non-oil sectors, given that all of these monies will end up at the center 
and will be uh, distributed. Maybe based perhaps on also stop practicing uh, federalism and co uh, cosmetic federalism, rather. Yeah, that, that's why the, that's why the, the, the operative word there is true. True federalism <laughs> is, is the way. I mean, we have a federal system, yeah. but the but problem we, yeah, is we are, we are actually practicing it, federal system. Yeah, it's whether but the, is it really in, it, in, in true real or or, or, as, or, or, or false or um, let's say uh, pseudo. Well, uh, let's look at it now this way now. Uh, in uh, the 14th Emir also did talk about the issue of subsidy. The 14th Emir of Kano, yeah. he did talk about the issue of uh, subsidy. That if we continue to pay subsidy, if a new government that will take office uh, about 18 days from now said he will continue to pay subsidy, it means that he, according to him, he will just go and sleep and wait for the next uh, uh, cycle of election, which probably will be 2027 because according to him, we are still going to be here. We will not be moving anywhere. What is your reaction to that statement? Of course, I completely agree with that statement. I've, I've said it a number of times here. I've been a proponent for the removal of sub subsidies since, uh, I think, uh, since... Uh, what about the ripple effect that it will have of, on the economy? Uh, the, the, the question is, I mean, what... Uh, the purchasing power of Nigerians. The, the question is, what is really the economic impl impl implication of uh, our... Um, uh, maintaining because we're subsidy. told that when subsidy is removed, the price of fuel, of course, is going to uh, increase maybe by about 50 percent or 100 percent, as the case may be. But you know that when anything ha or happened to to uh, fuel, it, it trickled down to the other sectors of the economy, of course. Uh, I'm not denying that, but the question we'll ask is uh, what is the long term benefit of uh, removing a subsidy? And what is the long-term benefit of maintaining subsidy? If you look at uh, uh, the price of petrol since uh, 2012, that uh, protest at Ojota mm. in Lagos, mm. petrol price has gone up. I mean, we have had in season uh, mm. several periods of uh, petroleum uh, scarcity. In, in, in five seconds, you think Nigeria has the shock absorber to absorb whatever will come, uh, the ripple effect that will come from subsidy removal? Uh, Nigerians, are, Nigerians are very re uh, resilient people. I mean, if the, there is a very clear idea of what the economy uh, goals will be like after the removal of full subsidy, I think Nigerians can uh, eat the bullet. Joseph Alguamos, thank you for your time. Political economist, thank you for your time on Business Daily. And thank that you. is a wrap on Business uh, Daily today. Join us tomorrow for more. I am Yusuf Akogo.